Hi and welcome in the next part of my JavaScript series. Today I want to introduce you functions. So some theory at the beginning. Functions allow us to group multiple instructions in one block of code. And if we use same lines of code in several places of our program or script, we can place this code in the body of function and call it whenever we need to. So to create function, we have to use function keyword. So let's do it. And after this, we have to give the name to our function. So let's say it will be say hello. After the name of our function, we use two parentheses. And after this, we have to define the behavior or body of our function. And in our case, our function will be displaying some message to the console. So let's say hello world. Now, if we save the file and refresh the web browser, we will not see anything in the console because uh, we have to call the function. So let's do it. To call the function, we have to use just the name of our function. And now let's save the file, refresh. And as you can see, here is our message from the function. We can also pass values to our functions, which one are called function parameters. So let's create function, which one will calculate area of the rectangle. So we are using function keyword and we are providing the name. And now we have to define parameters. And in our case, it will be width and height. Now let's define the behavior of our function. So let's create a variable which one will hold the area of our rectangle. And let's multiply width by height. And now let's display some output to the console. So let's play rectangle area is and the value of rectangle area. And now to call function like this, we have to call function with arguments. So we are using the name of our function as we did before. And now we are providing values or arguments to our function. So it will be four and let's say five. Now, if we save the file and refresh, we can see 20. And now if we want to calculate area of another rectangle with different width and height, we are just using the function again and we are changing the values or arguments. So let's say it will be nine and uh, seven. Let's save, refresh. And as you can see, it's 63. So we don't have to type again these lines of codes, we are just calling function again with different arguments. By the way, I have a little type over here and now it should be okay. Yeah, it, now it's nice. We called our function two times using literal arguments, but we can also call our function using regular variables. So let's say we have two variables like rectangle width, which one hold 11. And let's say we have rectangle height, which one hold four. And now we are doing exactly the same as we did before, but instead of using literals, we are using our variables. So first will be rectangle width and second one will be rectangle height. So let's save it. Let's go to the console, refresh. And as you can see, it's 44. Now let's try to create function, which one will return some value. Functions we have created do not return any values. They only have some side effect like displaying values to the console. So let's go over here and let's create new function. Let's say get square 
area which one will have parameter wall and now inside the body of the function let's create a variable which one will hold the result of our calculations so we want to multiply wall by wall and now we want to return square area so to do it we have to use return keyword and we have to use the name of variable we want to return now to get the value from function like this we have to create a new variable so let's say it will be result and now we have to use our function and provide some argument so in our case it will be let's say six and now uh, how it works we are calling get square area with six with argument six we are going over here we are calculating six by six and holding the result over here after this we are returning our value and we are saving it to our result variable and now we can make use of our variable and let's display it to the console like this save refresh and as you can see it's 36 using functions and returning values like we did over here is really helpful to organize code and make it more readable now i want to show you how we can return multiple values from our functions so let's go over here and let's create new function for example get rectangle perimeter and area and it will has two parameters first one will be width and the second one will be height and now let's create variables which one will hold area and the perimeters so first one will be rectangle area and now let's calculate the area of our rectangle and now we are doing exactly the same with perimeter and we are cal calculating the perimeter okay and now let's create new variable which one will hold array so we use square brackets and first element will be rectangle area and the second one will be rectangle perimeter okay and now let's return our array so we want to use return and after this we are returning our array rectangle parameters now to get values from returned array let's create new variable for example rectangle params and let's call our function with arguments six and four okay and now to get for example rectangle area we have to use the name of our variable which one holds the result from the function and we have to use square bracket inside the square bracket we want to use zero because area is uh, on the index of zero now we do exactly the same to get the perimeter but we are changing index from zero to one okay and let's save it now refresh and as you can see we got the 24 and 20. so what happened here is we called our function with two arguments x and the four then we calculated area and the perimeter over here after this we have created 
variable which one will store array with our area and the perimeter and after this we are returning this array over here so by returning the array this variable over here became array and that is why we can use indexes to display values in the console like this in the javascript we have also something that is called immediately invoked function expression and basically it is a function which we don't have to call so let's create one let's say it will be function which will calculate triangle perimeter and we are creating it like a regular function so let's create three different variables like wall a wall b which one will hold eight and wall c which one will hold five and now let's calculate triangle perimeter and just add every walls every wall okay and now let's display our perimeter to the console okay and now if we want to make this function immediately invoked function expression we have to use parentheses over here so function is between these two parentheses and also we have to use parentheses over here like this and now as you can see we are not calling this function anywhere and if we save it and refresh here is our triangle perimeter we can also place these two parentheses over here and it will works too as you can see but the popular convention is to place them here at the end of this tutorial i want to show you a second way of creating functions so let's comment out this code and let's go over here and to create function in the other way we can just use a variable so let's create a variable say hi and now using assignment operator we are assigning the function like this and for example let's say this function will display hello everyone to the console and we can also call it like regular function and if we save and refresh as you can see we got hello everyone there is a little difference between those two types of creating function and now if we try to call this function before creating it so let's call it over here so first we are calling this function and after this we are declaring it so let's refresh and as you can see it works but if we try to do the same with this function so if we try to call it before creating it and if we save and refresh it will give us an error that happens because interpreter has to first resolve this expression and assign a function to variable say hi to use it as a regular function it's everything for today guys I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. See you next time.